Uh, the guard outside, who's guarding, staring out at this parking lot at this mini mall, does not see one of our heroes walk up and shoot him right in the chest. So I'm like, what were you looking at? <laughs> like, it shows him like standing guard looking out and then it cuts to our person walk up and go bang and then it cuts back to him dying. And I'm like, what were you watching? What the fuck are you doing? Hello and welcome back to the 82nd episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo, the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, let's talk about this one. Uh, this We were scrambling for a movie. I went to the recent recommendations, saw this, watched about five minutes of it. And was like, yep, we're talking about... This My movie. first impressions of this movie were this is what happens when an entire stunt crew is like, we can make our own film. Yeah, and do all the special effects <laughs> and all of the acting and all of the directing exactly. and all of the editing. Yeah, which is I think is exactly what this oh, is. Yeah, totally. It seems like. The, the, uh, you, you could tell like the people behind the scenes, like every single one of them was a stunt coordinator. Yes, or and a lot of the actors and actresses, or at least the act, I, a couple of the actors I looked up, uh, like the main head of the Russian mob guy is like a relatively big named stunt guy coordinator. He's worked on like the Scorpion King yeah. and like, you know, bigger Which movies. also would make sense why they got Mel Novak for the yeah. uh, for the lead. Because yeah. he's known for well back when he back was back when he was not <laughs> ninety eight years old and looked like the Crypt Keeper. But he, yeah. he was known for doing all of his own stunts. Yeah. Um yeah. And so uh the movie's called Syndicate Smasher. Uh and it's a very simple story of a group of mercenaries who get on the wrong side of this let's is list them down. The Mafia, the Russian Mob, the Yakuza, and I think the, the Tong. It, well, they call them Tong in the in the yeah, Amazon right. description, but I they're some Chinese but yeah, gang. It's, it's four crime organizations yes. that they're caught in the middle of. Yes, and uh, and they end up going to war with all of them. And it's glorious. Uh, Let's face at it. Times. They are they are assassin assassin versions of the A team. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what this is. Basically, yeah, uh, yeah, a, a kind of a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's basically it. And so the but the uh, you, like you said the the stunt. Uh, so ima imagine John Wick, but terrible. Where it's <laughs> it's like written and directed. I think by a. I'm pretty sure John Wick is directed by a stunt coordinator, like a stunt man who worked on like all the Matrix movies and stuff with mm -hmm. Keanu Reeves, and then was like, I'm gonna direct my own movies. I'm pretty sure. I I love the first two. I haven't seen the third one yet. But it's like that where it's like we're going to get a bunch of stunt guys and it's going to be all like practical, like beating people up and stuff. Uh, and shooting people. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be nonstop balls of wall action. And which, then they went to do work. it because like John Wick, I mean, the, the stunts in John Wick are so fluid and yeah. work so well. Yeah. But and nobody's then, in this is as no, talented as no, Keanu Reeves but, or his stunt people. These people came in and were like, they, they they made it work, but let's give it a shot. Yeah. No. no. And, and the other thing is that they're... It, so, like, the simplicity of John Wick is also what makes it work, whereas this movie isn't really not, super simple. No. <laughs> like, the simplicity of John Wick is just, man wasn't a spy, uh, people hurt him, he hurt them. They the end. <laughs> like, they killed his dog, now he's killing them. Yes, like, that's basically the extent of it. And then this, there's, like, the, the, the there's like uh, hints of, like, the greater world that's going on in the back, behind the is, scenes. But I don't want to say it's lower concept, but it's super, it is. It's super it is. easily understand, it's, understandable. Yeah, it's super lower concept, but more complicated at the same yeah, but, time. So it's, like... You put low, the lower concept and you just keep stacking on top of that. Yeah. The same thing where you, you just have just a couple of like planks aboard. Yeah. Each other. We were like, well, now this person, now they, now they, uh, oh, they messed up with this gang. And then now they got to make it right with that gang. So they try to make it right with that gang. And oop, now they messed up with this gang. And now they're trying to make it right it, with that gang. And then oop, they messed it, up with this it gang. It feels more like a sitcom. Yeah. Than it does <laughs> yeah. a movie. Yeah. And I am going to catch him when he does. Uh, 
and my favorite thing is that every actor in this movie is 174 years old. Yes! <laughs> I love seeing you. I love the time we have together. Someone or, I don't know, some people here are on the take. It's over. Leave the man be. All you guys, you got people running around out here. Also, also, special guest appearance from somebody who's been on the show before, Joe Estevez. Joe Estevez! I have three dead Japanese nationals. Joe Estevez makes an appearance. He's one of the people that's 174. Um, I, I was like, did they film this at a fucking retirement center in Florida <laughs> and just like got all the... Now, they're all people who have been in things, yes. so... But, uh, all right, let's get into it. So, Syndicate Smasher, uh, the production house, New Generation Pictures. Generation. Interesting. Uh, I believe the the writer and the director are both Asian American, or, or maybe, I don't know where exactly they're from. I, I, um, one of the actors is from is Cambodian, uh, which we'll talk about at is the that, end is of that the, the movie. Is that the little dude? Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about the little guy uh, at the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, that's a that's a real like, I love it. downer of an ending. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's absolutely we'll, amazing. We'll talk about it because that's for real. I looked that up. <laughs> that the thing on his shirt is true of that actor. I know, it just yeah. It just it just seems completely like random. Yeah, like random, why is this? It serves no purpose. Yeah, it's it's wild. Spoilers. Um, so we open up on soaring. Uh, oh, I thought Nevada countryside. It reminded me of Neil Breen's drone shots because they definitely yes. stole Neil Breen's drone in this movie, and they use it several times to uh, mixed effect. It's sometimes the drone shots look okay. There's like a kind of cool shot where the guy's like laying down sniping, and it like spins around him. <laughs> kind of cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then there's shots later in the movie that are terribly well, terribly done. Yes. And we'll talk about yeah. it. Um, but so the, we, we open with these two snipers walking through like the desert and the, the hip foothills in the desert. And it's this man and this woman. Oh, we find out eventually. I mean, this was all shot in California. So this is just somewhere yeah, in the yeah. outside just, of L.A. But the way they're going about this stealth operation, mm -hmm. in addition to them being horrible at being, you know, covert. Yeah. They also can't see shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is this is my first note in this movie is the woman goes, where are they? They're not here. We were told they would be here. Where are they? And then it cuts, and she goes, oh, there they are, and it cuts to There's a shot. There's like 12 of them. Wait a minute, I see something. There's like two dozen dudes walking through a field, <laughs> like an open field. It's like, wait, did they sneak up on you? What, what, there's like, it literally cuts from, where are they? Oh, there they are. There's just a an entire unit of men in this field. It's like, all right, did they like pop up out of the ground? What the fuck is going on? At my three o'clock, two hundred meters. There you go, fucker. And then so she's the the girl, and I can't remember her name. She's Russian, but I can't remember her name. She's staring at them uh, through a scope, and then the other guy is also looking through the scope. Uh, and she, I don't know how you're supposed to, do you know much about how to use a scope on a sniper, right, on a rifle? Do you stare both eyes into it? I don't know. You could, you could. I've always thought you did one eye. It's, eyes, it's but one. <laughs> she um, stares both eyes into it. So I, I don't know. Uh, but she decides she needs to take her shot. I see him. I'll take him. Wait for backup. They don't show we abort the mission. I'm not dying over a hundred grand. So she she decides she's not waiting for backup. She's gonna take their shot now. Sorry, I gotta pay off my Ferrari. Hey, wait. She shoots because she needs money for her Ferrari. So she, because this is establishing that they're mercenaries, Kyle. She shoots and, and misses the main target, kills a random guy, and then all hell fucking breaks loose. You crazy. And the this is where it just everybody starts shooting everybody, uh, and we get we get the start of our CG blood spurts, which are, are copious in this film. Yes, and glorious. Terrible. They legit look as bad as the ones in my movie. Like, and I did that in an afternoon on a laptop, so like, 
<laughs> with a laptop. Uh, eventually, they all keep getting shot. Or they shoot a bunch of guys, and there's lots of fun shootout stuff, but they get caught. Take this, motherfuckers. Get your wrists up. And they get grabbed by the main general dude whose beret is just daintily perched upon his head. Um, and he grabs them over, and he sets them down. He goes, you guys are dead. Kill them. And then they take 20 minutes to turn around and aim and shoot them. And right as they're going to shoot them. as they do that, bam, Hannibal, bam, bam. <laughs> Hannibal and B.A. <laughs> come out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, and they fucking roll in on a, on a truck with a mounted machine gun in the back. And this old man, this is Mel Novak. I saw, I, when I first saw him, I was like, oh God, how'd they get John Voight for this? Yeah, I, I thought, I was like, oh my, they got a, they, they, did they, they're like, they're a weekend at burning a corpse in the back of that <laughs> truck. Like I legitimately, for the first minute he started shooting, thought it was a decoy and that they had put a corpse in the back of the truck as a decoy for them to shoot at. <laughs> nope, that's just Mel Novak's face. <laughs> oh, and I love, so he starts unloading with his machine gun, and my favorite thing about it is he does zero acting, and this he's yes. just like... Yes. Uh, in addition to that, he, he was, he's been a villain in a lot of movies, yeah. Mel Novak. There's a reason for that. He has exactly one acting drive <laughs> yeah. and does not change from it. No. I'm the one you ordered a hit on. Yeah, that's right. I'm still walking. No, and he, yeah, he's not, uh, he's not a multi-layered actor, uh, in, at least in this movie. These maggots have no idea who they've crossed. I, I could definitely see him as being younger as being an intimidating guy. Yeah, he so kind of does intimidating when he's, even in this movie, he kind of does it, but he's... 98 Frail. years old yeah. and so it doesn't work you're like i could just push you over old man like okay maybe we cut our losses no nobody steals from us nobody i don't care who they are one way or another we're gonna get the money that they owe us uh so they just start unloading on everybody and then <laughs> he's also got a headband on like fucking rambo <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, and then the other guy, the little dude. The other guy. And by the way, you can't tell he's little no, in this. That's no. because the, he, the truck just looks cute. Yeah, yeah. You thought I thought it was just like a giant truck. But he comes around the corner with a fucking machine gun that is this bigger it's, than yes, him. It's, it's, yes, exactly. It's huge. <laughs> And just starts unloading and they're murdering everybody. I will give the movie this and, and like these opening minutes, they're not hesit they're not uh, hesitating with the body count. They are going for it. And, and the beginning of it, you know, when they're when these snipers are shooting them, you know, they take a shot, they go down. Yeah. When they bring out the big guns, body parts start body flying. Body parts start flying up. A dude's leg flies up, but terribly. Like yes. uh, terribly. Uh, it looked like it was cookie cuttered out, like it was lassoed they, out and yes. then flung. Literally, they went into After Effects. They like took a still frame and they like took, they took, they lassoed a chunk of the guy's head and then dragged it out of the picture. <laughs> it's so whenever I see some of them, whenever I see the, the leg fly off, I was, I, all I could hear in my head was bling. Yeah. <laughs> So it like it reminds it's almost it's like the the cow's leg gets blasted off in Battlefield Earth. It's, <laughs> that was way better though. Oh man, it's yeah, it's one of those things where this I you know if only they had, had could gone for some practical effects, but no, it, the fact that it's all terrible CG makes it better. And it's so long. <laughs> yes, opening the opening scene. scene lasts for like five or six it, minutes. It, it, it has about a minute of context. Uh, a minute of direction, and then six solid minutes of the same thing <laughs> yes, over and over. Yes. It is just shots of people running into a frame, shooting gun, cut to person in frame, being shot. And just over and over again. And I was like, I could watch 90 minutes of this old man emotionlessly shooting this machine gun on top of this truck. It's incredible. Because the camera zooms in on his face and you're imagining like you're, I know what they're going for. Like, you know, that moment with Rambo where he's like, ah, or like fucking Arnold or something. Like, like just that moment of like, ah, mowing down all the It doesn't people. work with Mel Novak. No, because he's just like, 
And I don't know if he's intentionally doing that or if his face is just stuck that way. I, I think I think what we we don't I think internally. Like if we were looked at his internal face muscles, they're like moving, but his skin <laughs> yeah. is like it's just solid rock now. It really does. It's, it's Sharon Stone and Catwoman. Yeah, it, <laughs> it just, really it truly won't move. <laughs> truly. Uh, there's bazookas and RPGs, and just it, it's every gun under the sun uh, ends up in this opening scene. He gets a flamethrower. <laughs> that guy is kind of roasts all these what people. The That's, it's the best flamethrower effect we may have ever had in yes, a movie it, compared to Neil Breen and Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. It is like top tier. <laughs> oh, and then Melv Novak throws a grenade. <laughs> and watching him chuck a grenade is amazing. Oh watching him do anything in this movie is amazing. He's old. Yeah. <laughs> The <laughs> accents in this are fantastic. They actually, because they are all people, the people playing the characters are all yes. of the, whatever ethnicity um, that they're playing. My favorite one are probably the Italian mobsters. Who oh, maybe not them, yeah. Italian. You know, the only reason you're in office is because we put you there. Gabish? Like, like half these guys <laughs> the are like... Italians. There's one dude in particular where I'm like, what the fuck is Larry David doing? I know! <laughs> the point is, none of our people are supposed to get clipped without all of us agreeing. Oh, don't give me that shit, Julie. I know, that guy's my favorite! But I felt like they're like, we're gonna get authentic uh, ethnicities, or uh, uh, people of the authentic ethnicity to play all these different characters. Except for the Italian guys, we'll get some white guys to go, a gabagool, a gabagool! Yeah, Disgraziato. That's a crock of shit. I'm sure each of them has Italian in them. And yeah, they, maybe. They, they, they seem to, they're, Italian not, doesn't sound terrible. Then again, yeah. we're both Americans. Yeah, I, it sounds, English, so. it sounds whatever. I don't know. Um, but, because uh, like everybody else, like, which is kind of cool too, is like in a lot of the scenes, they do speak, like, which is like, like John Wick. They they speak Russian. Держи красавица. Все в косарей. Это что такое? Or they're speaking uh, um, uh, Japanese. Or they're speaking Chinese and they're subtitling it. <laughs> Which is interesting, you know, at least like that, you know, it feels more authentic, at least when these gangs are talking to each other, speaking whatever language that, you know, that they would be speaking. Uh, so he, they, they wrap that job up. All right, boom. Uh, they get their money. Uh, we get a, a long driving scene of a guy that really wanted to show off his his, his Dodge Munster or Charger or whatever the fuck. Look, look at my awesome car. Yeah. And then he gets to the thing and he gets paid by Mel Novak and Mel Novak's like, guys, all right, guys, come get your bread. Come get your bread. And I'm like, that's a thing mercenaries say, come get your bread. Well, because well, I couldn't, because it was already copyright. Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they get paid. Uh, Mel Nelvac goes home uh, to go to the bone zone with his lady friend. And then I came here because I wanted to see you. I love seeing you. I love the time we have together. Me too, so stop watching the television. And I was like, dear lord, if I have to watch these two have sex, I will kill myself <laughs> right now. Uh, watching them kiss is bad enough. Watching Mel, Mel Novak rub his, like, fish mouth on this lady's face is, it rivals Neil Breen levels of, like, uncomfortable. <laughs> And he also, so this is, was, I assume this is supposed to be Mel Novak's apartment, right? Or where he lives? I thought it was a hotel. Oh, maybe it's supposed to be a hotel. It kind of looks like an apartment to me. And I was like, so he's this big badass mercenary making all yeah. this money. And he lives in a one bedroom apartment well, got, with a window has, air conditioning unit. Maybe he unit. has to be like transient. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's or, it. Or who would ever expect that? Ah, you're right. He, he lives a humble who, life. Who, who would ever expect 
an octogenarian. Yeah. <laughs> who is like decrepit. <laughs> living and in a one Falling room. apart. Yeah. Living <laughs> in a one room apartment. I have to imagine that in every scene they filmed with him, his walker and oxygen tank was like right off camera. He's like, okay, I'm gonna go do this okay. scene. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hopping it like Dennis Hopper. <sighs> yeah. He just looks like he's falling apart in this movie. It's uh, like it. Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting choice to cast him as your main like badass action hero. Again, what he should have played in this movie is he should have played like the the retired mercenary who they went to for like inform like to for like help or something like who doesn't like do most of the heavy or, lifting. Or in he could go even more Hannibal and be like, he's got to get the gang back together for one last. Right. Time. Yeah, he's got to go around and get the, them back together, but he doesn't actually go around and do all the fighting because he's yes. like ninety years old. It seems like. Only got a hundred years. So they have this new job uh, that's offering them three hundred thousand dollars to kill a guy. Uh, his but one of the mercenaries comes over. And is like, look, we got this job, and they're like, all right, it's uh, kill a guy and make a delivery. They, oh, they yeah. make that important because yeah. they get screwed over later. Yeah, they do. Uh, so they go, they pull up to do surveillance on this guy. This is, this is, this is great. <laughs> are, are, this now, are you so talking about yes. them just looking at him or the guns? Because I was like, guns I'm looking are at him. Fucking crazy. I, I missed the guns. But okay, we'll, well, we'll talk about the best them moment. They pull up on this guy's house that they're there to kill. It's all he goes. Let's get the gang together. All four of them are in his car, and they pull up to do surveillance on this guy's house. And we get a shot through the front window of this car, and Mel Novak's in the driver's seat. Uh, the Russian girl and the other guy are in the back seat, and the, and the little dude is in the passenger <laughs> seat, like, and he comes up. Like this I checked it out already. The house isn't under his name. It's under the city's. It's confiscated property, probably seized by the police. <laughs> He's like barely over the day. And that was the moment because I didn't realize yes, until that yes, moment. Uh, my mind was blown yeah, at that point. I was like, wait a second. He's is he a little there, kid? There's a part where they wait for him to go inside. Yeah. One, the, the the Russian chick's way too eager yeah. to start killing she people. Always, yeah. Yeah, that's him. Let's go. No, no. Let him get inside. Cause you but know. they wait for him to go inside because they need to make it clean. Yeah. Whenever they get out, they start pulling out their guns with the suppressors. They have suppressors. The suppressors on. are fucking huge. I, that's pretty abnormal. I think it's a pretty you accurate so? thing. Yeah, I okay. think that's pretty well, accurate. Neither one of us are gun experts. No, not but, at all. We, but they, we, as has been documented. They looked comically enormous. They did, but I think those are actually legit, um, like... Uh, yeah, I think that's potentially realistic. I don't know. They I, I should have just used soda bottles. They should have, but um, it would have been. See, that would have been a cool thing if they did that at one point in this movie or something like that, and they don't. It'd make um, more sense. It would be. It would be better if, like, there was a point where they were either separated or they're without their gadgets or their guns or anything, and they have to like rely on their yeah, own wits to yeah, kind of. Yeah, that would overcome. be cool. That would be cool. No, it, they didn't think this through that much. Yeah. They were like, we're just gonna run around and shoot a bunch of people, and they're like, okay. <laughs> But, uh, so they pick the lock and they're inside and they have a shootout like four feet from this guy, four of our assassins <laughs> yes. or three of our assassins, trained assassins who had no problem shooting people everybody. Like, hundreds of yards away. There's one guy eight feet away on a couch. They shoot at him a hundred times and don't and that, hit him. That couch must be bulletproof. I know. Well, and then half the time he's not even behind it. He's like shooting at them above it. And then he runs out the door and they're all shooting at him and none of them can hit him. I was like, what happened here? Okay. So he runs outside uh, and then Mel Novak shows up. It sucked to be these guys' neighbors. Yeah, right. Mel Novak shows up and uh, fucking murders him. And, and um, there is no, like, no mercy in this movie nope, at all. No, they just murder Mel people. Mel Novak is not, he, he's he's our protagonist. No. He is not a good guy. He's an anti-hero, if you will. Um, but he, uh, so he shoots the guy in the head, and I love there's a blood spatter on the tree behind him, and as they walk out of the shot, because it's a CG blood yeah, spatter that is mapped gone. on, it is motion tracked onto the tree, <laughs> 
as as the camera starts moving, the blood is like shaking a little bit. Let's roll. And I was like, yep, that's a, I know that kind of rush job CG work. I've done that myself where you're like, that's close enough. Nobody will notice. <laughs> oh, and the blood's just moving just a little bit on the tree. Let's roll. There's so many things they could have done with the CG in this movie, but none of them knew how to do no. it. So many times there's the some, bullet there's holes. Some, uh, there's one particular moment where they're doing a uh, hotel shootout mm -hmm. where <laughs> the, the, the pool of blood yeah, exactly. on the guy's chest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, what took you so long? It's like, it's, it, the guy's laying on the floor, chest up towards the ceiling, and the blood pool is clearly a flat on the frame, like, yes. you know what I mean? Like, it's like not remotely oh. mapped to the geography of the scene. And they also do a lot in the movie later where there's like bullet holes on stuff, but they, so they used like, you know, like a, they bought some, some sort of like, uh, pre made, uh, bullet hole animations that you can that are like over an alpha channel that you can apply mm. to stuff and I, like, I've done stuff like that in my movies What no way well not the bullet holes, but yeah like bullet shots and stuff like that and But my favorite thing is so what they what they didn't do is they didn't remotely color grade the bullet holes to the surfaces that yeah, they're so it on. Just, it looks super yeah. like separated. Yeah, it's just like it looks, it's just, it looks ridiculous. It's like, come on, it would take five. You put all this work into motion track bullet holes onto your stuff and to make them show up. Take the extra 30 seconds color graded to match the background. Shit. We've been going for about a minute. That's but we oh, find so out the, this, this guy that they were hired to kill was a witness. Yes, and he's trying. I'm a to, witness. It's the Rolls Royce that hit him. I saw it. I'm a witness. Put down. <laughs> who? I guess he's not really the like the head honcho crime boss. He's the head of the L.A. mafia. He's the head of the family, the mafia family in L.A. Is basically. I'm just, I'm just thinking Mickey Cohen right now. Yeah. He's the head of his Dipolito is his name. He's the head of the the mafia in L.A. Um, and yeah, this guy was going to testify against them and they killed him. Is it true that the charge declared a mistrial in the case? Yes, it's true. My client has been cleared of all charges just like we knew he would be. Because of the death of the prime witness against him? They didn't realize that's who they were killing at the time, but we get a great, um, we get a great scene of the guy coming out of the courtroom. You know, he's, his trial's been dismissed because the, oh, lo yes. okay. the lawyer is amazing. The this lawyer amazing. is incredible. <laughs> In addition to being a giant man, he, he just he's kind of goofy, but yeah. at the same time, yeah. like he, but he's not a great actor. No, he's a terrible actor. We are truly saddened of the death of Mr. Manzella. He was a dear friend of my client. But his testimony would be totally irrelevant in this case. <laughs> he's, he's there to literally say his lines and yeah. then be done. Yeah. Uh, he's just like kind of like stumbles across his lines through the scene. And then he gets out of the scene, but he, he still has lines 80 yard in. Yes. Excuse me. This is harassment. Please leave now. Yes, it's okay. So the detective who was heading the uh, the, yeah. uh, the case yeah. that was leading to his prosecution, she showed up and was get, getting into the guy's face. Yeah, she's like, "Hey." And while they're talking, we can hear those eighty-yard line. Or not, not even really eighty yards. It's just, not the same actor. I no, no, it's it. completely separate. And he's just like, "Hey, this is harassment. Leave my client alone." <laughs> That's it. We're going straight to your superiors. We're filing harassment suit against you. <laughs> Off camera, right. it's so stupid. But this, so this is where we, this is where we meet the detective, and I can't remember her. Uh, what is her name? Laureen something. Yeah, um, she's a detective. Uh, she's also like a hundred years old. Uh, <laughs> she has a very similar uh, visage to Mister Mel Novak. Um, and, uh, so she was on this case trying to bring down Dippolito and she's like, Hey, I know you had that guy killed. How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. And then she punches a reporter in the scene. Ends. Detective Driscoll, how did you find out about this? Oh my face, bitch. She doesn't punch a reporter, but the reporter comes up to talk to her and she like slaps her hand. There, out there was a point where that report and she was like, the reporter's like, did you get that? And as the cameraman was like moving to, to, to get the detective back in the shot, he almost whacks the reporter. <laughs> the reporter's like, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. <laughs> Did you get that? And then uh, we go back to the the mercenaries, um, and they have to. Re they're talking to the Russians, and they need to do another job before. Or they're not talking to the Russians, but they're about to talk to the Russians. What's her name is talking to the mm -hmm. Russians, and they need the Russians need them to, to deliver these drugs in order to get paid. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they whacked the guy, but now they got to deliver these drugs to get paid. Also, the, uh, Mel Novak is wearing an amazing hat, which he wears throughout this movie, where it's like he's dressed like the stereotype of like a mafia mob boss, mm. but he's not part of the mafia in this no. movie. Um, he's got this he, great hat he, he wear, and like he, pinstripe suit. Yes, he's very. Um, th- there's a certain style to it, like '60s. He's like not zoot white suit businessman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty great, uh, and he he wears that suit occasionally throughout this movie, and other times he's dressed like you know like a mercenary or whatever. Um, so they got to go. Uh, they're going to get their money from the Russians, but they got to deliver these drugs to the Yakuza, I think. Right? I yes. think that's, I think yeah. that's right. Okay, um, so they're delivering the drugs. This is amazing. Just yeah. absolutely amazing. The level of CG in this film yeah. is something oh. that both of us could do oh. within about five minutes on After Effects. Yes, yeah. literally, the stuff they do in this movie, I like I said, you can do it. I can tell a lot of this was done so... They, they did all of the special effects in this movie in like a week. You like think, on you, a, you think they could have gone to like a college... Yeah. Even like a junior college yeah. and be like, hey, we need some interns. Yeah. Maybe not junior college, but yeah, they could have went to a college and got somebody to uh, burn on junior colleges and got somebody to um, to do the special effects in their movie way better than they did them. But our, our guy our guy from the beginning, what, what was his name? The one, the taller guy with the hair, uh, sniper dude at the beginning? I can't remember his think, name. Oh, Jack. 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 Yeah, it is Jack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's Jack. he's got he's looking through a scope, and we see it in a, a hotel that is side boarded, of a building, we, side of a building, completely boarded up. Yeah. Except for one, one window, window of a guy, a person of a still frame, S- CG composited <laughs> yes. onto this for video it's, of the hotel. It's glorious. It's amazing. And, he, and you can tell, too, that it's not remotely accurate where he is in that still frame from the window. It's not remotely accurate to where he is in the well, room. He looks like a giant person. Yeah. He looks like a, a 10-foot-tall human being yeah. in this building. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and then we cut inside the building. So now we know our, we got a sniper watching him to kind of help him out if shit goes bad. Um, also, I want to talk about, I will say that the main Russian dude who was in the last scene is pretty fucking good, I thought. Like, the, the uh, they, they kill him eventually, but the, the Russian Dan Harmon guy, uh, yeah. uh, he, I, he's actually, in this scene, he does a pretty good job, and he's the guy that's like a stunt coordinator who's worked on, like, kind of big movies and stuff. They will be long ago. They will be long ago. They will be long ago. They will be Um, but I thought he did an actually good job. I just wanted to give that guy some props. I don't know. <laughs> you, think, you think he's worked with Wolf? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, Russian and a stunt coordinator feels like odds are high. Because <laughs> all know. Russians know each yeah, other. Yeah, all Russians know each other. Um, uh, uh, and then this is where they find out. I, I I don't remember if it's where they find out. But eventually they find out that the guy they killed was uh, a made member of... Or somebody talks about how the, the Manzello, who's was, the guy that killed, as as uh, they say in the Goodfellas, yeah, he was a made man. He was a made man. You can't whack a made man from another family. He was from uh, Kansas City, I think, or St. Louis. No, St. Louis. He was from St. Louis. Oh boy, yeah, because the St. Louis mob boss is uh, shows up later. And from St. Louis, Ralph Bancato. Oh, also, we got to talk about real quick that uh, we got to introduce the chief of the. I think this all happens right before the hotel scene. That we got to introduce the chief of the the police or whatever who our lady detective is working for. Um, she goes in, she talks to him. She's like, I, I I'm trying to figure this case out. Blah blah blah. She, they they try desperately to make this woman seem like look look at her use her unorthodox yeah. methods yeah. And, and going behind the law yeah. in order to solve this case. Yeah. And at the, at the end, we're just like. She, she can't pull this off. Every potential witness we had against him. But I love for the chief of police, uh, who's played by, I can't remember the guy's name, Alan something, who you've seen in like bit parts on TV shows. Mm-hmm. Um, he has, they're like, we need, a, we, need a, we need a personality thing for him. He's on his desk. He's got his big desk in his office, and it's just like a computer and like paper and nothing else. But they're like, we need something to like personality. And they're like, I know. But he's, he's, he has the charisma of a sponge. Yeah, well, and what does a person with the charisma of a sponge have for to represent their personality on their desk? One single tube of tennis balls <laughs> just sitting on his desk. <laughs> that is, like, the only thing he has. It's one, a tube uh, of tennis balls. It's so fucking weird. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, I love at the end of the scene, she's, like, arguing with him, and she pulls the tennis ball out and then spins and throws it backhand behind her back at him, and he's like, 
I'm watching you. It's like, okay, great. And I am going to catch him when he does. It's all overcooked it's and super dramatic. For his walker. Oh, and also, so you're talked about the guy, the sniper, who's watching the hotel room. Mm. Well, we're going to talk about the the fact that that guy walks into his hotel that he's in with with gloves on yes. and a giant thing wrapped Completely in a blanket. Completely dressed in black. All in black, gloves, a giant thing, gun-sized thing under his arm wrapped in a blanket, walks through the lobby of the hotel and up to his oh. hotel room. Yeah, I know. And he was like... <laughs> and nobody says anything. <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind. I know. This was shot after. Was it after? Yeah, it had to have been because this what was, year was that? This was tw- I think. Or no, it was 2017, wasn't it? The. Well, yeah, I think it was 2017. Okay, so it was this the same was year. Oh God, did he watched this and get the idea. Classic bad movie trope. Let's test the drugs. They're good. Uh, and so they're like, all right, great. And uh, so our guys, though, smuggled some guns in with the drugs. Uh, shootout breaks out. Uh, they, he snipes the guy through the window. They shoot everybody else in the room. And this is the scene <laughs> where the guy walks out of the bathroom. The little dude walks out of the bathroom because, he, you know, Hilarious. He was peeing while this was all going down. And that blood pool is just yes, amazing. Glorious. Hey, what took you so long? Uh, and then Joe Estevez shows up. Mm? Yeah, hi. Uh, How are you doing? I, uh, I have a little case I was wishing you'd help me with. And they, he's well, talking. We last saw him riding off into the sunset in a uh, Rollerblade 7. Yes. And basically, he comes in to be like, hey, uh, I had this crime where these three guys who were part of the Accusa got murdered. Maybe this relates to your case uh, that you're looking into, lady. And she's like, maybe I'll look into it or whatever. And that's like all sure. he does. He doesn't really do anything. He's in like two no. scenes. He filmed this all in like an hour. Well, he's a week away from retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I cannot get over Mel Novak's lacquered up face. The bronzer on this man's face yes. is so fucking thick. Like, it's crazy. Um, what, what do, you, do you think they're just like covering up liver spots? I, yeah, it, he, he just looks like, and, and, it, and it's, it's very abruptly stops. Like he literally just like, they just sprayed paint in the front of his face and it's like, you're good. Go get him. Um, uh, and then uh, we're, uh, we get the so the Yakuza found out their men got murdered, so they send over a representative. And the representative, I don't know if you noticed who that was. I don't know if you've watched The Office, much of it, the American Office. Um, they send over uh, the like a, the the boss of the Yakuza or one of them, and the guy playing him is and I got his name here is Hidetashi Hasegawa, right. who is plays Hidetashi. Something else on the office. He guys the same first name. Uh, who is he? He's he he. And his story in the office is that he was worked for the yakuza. In Japan, had a sergeant number one, steady head. One day, yakuza boss need new head. In Japan, yes. do you remember this from the? No, I don't know. No, if but it's amazing. It's amazing. I love he that. worked for the in the, in the office. His story is that he worked for the yakuza. And or no, he didn't work for them, but he he was the number one heart surgeon in Japan. And the Yakuza came to him and said, hey, we got this guy who's, who needs to be operated on. Do it or we'll kill you. I do operation, but mistake. Yakuza boss die. And he goes uh, and he accidentally kills the guy. And then so he has to escape to America. Yakuza very mad. I hide fishing boat. Come to America. And that's why he's working at Dunder Mifflin now as he <laughs> fled to America. Right. But the the whole thing is that he actually didn't ma- he didn't make a mistake. He killed the guy on purpose. He tells this story. He's like, actually, that was no mistake. I'm the best surgeon, number one. I killed him on purpose. <laughs> My big secret. I killed Yaksabos on purpose. I could search him. So best. <laughs> or something like that. It's a it's a great clip. And it's that guy is playing that. And I was like. Is this? I love how your mind is blown so much. Well, it was just super, well, because you've never seen the show. Like, yeah, but it was just super weird. I was like, I've never seen that guy in anything else. And both of the things he's in, he's like a Yakuza, like related to the Yakuza somehow. 
タリアンのやつらと話がついてます。イタリアン。Um, so they show up, the Yakuza show up to America.、Um, some stuff goes down.、Yeah. So this is where our mafia or crime families are、yeah. starting to、It's、come together because they're all now having issues with these mercenaries. And they're the, the, the only one we haven't gotten right now is, is the, the Chinese. The Chinese gang, which again, I think the Amazon calls them the Tongs or Tongs or something like that, which,、uh, yeah, traditionally, you know, I. When you think Chinese gang in a movie, it's like triads, but I don't know. This man of triads, the most deadly gang in China. They took the drugs that they were going to sell to the Yakuza after they killed him, and they're trying to get rid of him now. And they go to this,、uh, <coughs> this club owner, Andy, who probably was like a producer who wanted to be in the movie. And they go to sell him these drugs. Here it is, sure eight. What are you out of your fucking mind? What are you bringing this shit in my fucking club for? What's wrong with you? And then it all happens. Or they sell him the drugs,、um, but、uh, he gets the grandstand for a few minutes know, in front of the camera. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hypothetically, if I was interested. And the, the audio quality in this scene is real, real solid. Okay, so everybody have a seat. I'm Andy. Can I get you guys something to drink before we get started? No, thank you, dear. But now all, everybody, all of our gangs have, have, have met up. And while they're meeting up and discussing what they're going to do about what, what all's going on, our lady detective has wiretapped this.、Mm. She said she was going to get a court order to do it. She didn't actually get the court order, but she wiretaps these people and she's watching all this happen. And this stakeout scene with her and her partner is incredible. I love this scene so much. There's so many little things in this moment. You got the judge to sign off on this, right? Um, and he, he goes, We were supposed to wait until we got the warrant. Oh, shit. We were supposed to wait for Judge Patterson to sign off on the wiretaps. They're going to have my badge, Driscoll. The, her partner is terrible in this scene.、Uh, she's out of focus the entire scene. The, the focus is on the wall behind her, and she's eating grapes the whole scene. I guess they're like, it's a stakeout thing. Stakeouts, you got to be eating something, you know, like Chinese、yeah. food or whatever. But she's like, no, I'm eating a, an entire box of grapes. Do you, do you think, like, because the action, certain action sequences are not awful in this movie? No. So, like, whoever. Well, they, I mean, they're okay. Whoever but, they got to do the cinematography at least knows their way around how it, and,、uh, choreography is supposed to be. Some of, the, some of the moments, yeah. Other moments, not so much. And yeah, and that, that was the confusing thing. It's like, are, is this just like a special, specialized people who are only decent at shooting certain like choreography stuff? Yeah. Because when it comes to like normal people conversation stuff, it looks terrible. Yeah. They're going to have my badge, Driscoll. Darcy found out I wired this place. We're both up the creek. Don't worry, okay? I think that's the case. These are like third unit. Like action scene, you know. Oh, I think what it is is that it's what, what wouldn't surprise me is because not even not all of the action is shot well. Like a lot of the, a lot of like there are moments that are, but a lot of the gunfights are not interesting because it's a per, like I said, it's a person walks into frame, shoots yeah. off frame,、yeah. cuts to another frame of a guy going, ugh. Well, like, a, that's boring to watch. When they're in the warehouse, there's and a they're couple. Coming out, they're coming out and like, Their groups and you got like tracking shots and stuff. There's a couple. That's what I said. It's like really weird how random it is between like this is like okay, moderately competently、oh, shot versus just like. It easily as be that they were switching the, the crews in and out so much because they were working on other money making movies. Yeah. Or, yeah. And this is like a passion project or, or, or even like that, you know, who, who was available that, that you, like you said, or like maybe certain people, because I wouldn't be surprised if people that were acting in the scenes. Where some of them were like also helping, like, you know, well, shoot the guy do- who played the little dude, he was an associate producer. Oh, well, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of the people in the movie were producers, but I like I wouldn't be surprised if like the the quality of what was being shot changed b on who was in the scene that day. And like, because the one guy, Jack, his scenes are all shot pretty well. And I wonder if it's because he knows what's going on. So when he was there, he's like, shoot it like this. And they're like, okay. But then when he's not there, the other people's scenes are like, 
a, a wide shot yeah. that they walk into, shoot off camera, and then, like, get cut. Uh, but we get a lot of exposition in the stakeout scene where she talks about how her 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 partner Ronnie yeah, got her, whacked. Her backstory is like because Russell DiPolito had Detective Ronald Tremonti whacked. That's why. Oh yeah, I heard about that. And she just weird. exposits this whole fucking backstory. Mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't just her partner; he was so much more. Kyle it was a hung jury on that case, if I remember. Ronnie wasn't just my partner. He was my, he was my life. He was my everything. Talking about the, the way, the way she initially she laid this out, crying. the way, the way she described like why he was so much more. I was like, is this, is he in a gay relationship with your dad? He loved my father very much. He spent all his time with him when he could. Wait, what? <laughs> There's you talking about, you know, my dad was oh, sick and, oh, yeah. and he was always there. He was always for there my for dad. my dad. Oh, that, that's actually a great backstory because, like, it, it, to me, it feels very clear that it's implied that they were together. Yes. And But I, that's a great backstory. It's like going off of that is that they were together, but behind her back, he was <laughs> fucking her dad. They both loved opera. My dad got sick, had a cardiac arrest. Ronnie was right there in the hospital. And she's like, you know, when my dad got sick and was in the hospital, he was there with him all the time. Like, a surprise, now that I think about it, like, a surprising <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> really amazing. Dad got sick, had a cardiac arrest, when he was right there in the hospital. Playing opera for him. She deserves an Oscar for this scene. She absolutely fucking, I'm dying. I know. She absolutely fucking crushes it. And by crushes it, I mean she's terrible. <laughs> um, you see this locket that I wear? These are Ronnie's ashes. I never take it off. Jesus. Uh, and then so we get the, the mafia scene where they're all at dinner. There's a couple mafia dinner scenes, but this is the first one where they're all at dinner and this is all the capuche. Hey, hey, oh, 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 no, no, we're Italian, hey. Yeah. Gabish? Basically, our LA turf, bo uh, bo uh, our LA mob boss is striking out on his own. He doesn't care about Chicago anymore and all the rest of them. He's doing his own thing, and he doesn't want them in his territory anymore. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm the boss now. Things are going to change around here. I don't want Chicago representing us no more. But I love, so he, he leaves the scene, basically LA guy's doing his own thing and Chicago guy's like, you pay for this, you schmuck. One more thing, stay attentive, pay attention, watch your back. Uh, our mercs get jumped in broad daylight by a gang. I guess the Italian guys send their mobsters, or the Russians send Russians, a bunch of guys yeah. after him. And it's just a big shootout in a parking lot, in like a mini mall parking lot. Well, they get one guy left. Yeah. And all they do is they take his mask off and they're like, he must be a Russian dude. All right. Bang. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought they were going to like interrogate him yes. or something. They don't do anything. M uh, Milan, by the way, is Mel Novak's character's Milan or whatever, mm. which turns out is Mel Novak's birth name. What? Yeah. His birth name's like Milan something, or I have it at the, hold on. His birth name is Milan Merjonovic, Merjonovic. That was his birth name, and he changed it to Mel Novak for Hollywood. And uh, I was like, all right, cool. Anyways. All right. <laughs> One of the Krukov's men. Move away. So they, they kill all those guys. They kill that last guy. It's stupid. Uh, uh, like for people. Okay. Gen I'm, I'm going to go into some dark corners here. If you're an assassin for hire, you do, you do, you do one thing very well. You kill people. You have to do something though, to make sure that you can continue to have work or two things. Really a make sure there are people to kill and B make sure there are people to pay you. If you just go around killing a whole bunch of mafia people, Eventually, you're not going to have people to pay you. This is... <gasps> yes. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Are you sure? Yes. No, I'm good. 
Mm, right. on my face. Basically, now all hell's gonna break loose. Our mercs are gonna go fight all these mobsters. Uh, they start killing just random people in like a montage yes, of murder. This is insane. Murder montage. This is insane. I All right. Love it. So you're you're an assassin. You're a hired assassin. So obviously what you need to do is go out in the middle of broad daylight and just shoot people in the back. Just shoot random people in cars, through windows, uh, in, in through walls, just everywhere. They're just shooting everybody. And it's like we it, don't know. Who it almost seems indiscriminate. Yeah. <laughs> And he always looks so bored. Um, Mel <laughs> Novak yeah. always looks so, so bored as he's murdering people. They're having salad in this scene at these ma the mafia dinner. And the salad literally, I was like, did they... Did Neil Breen cater this? It's like just spinach on a plate. It's literally just <laughs> spinach on a fucking plate. And all I could think of was Neil and his goddamn spinach on a plate. Uh, then the, this is where the, the Chinese gang is introduced. And when that the, the leader of that gang was first introduced, I was like, is that a fake mustache? That looks like a fake mustache. Nope, that guy just has a weird looking mustache. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a fake mustache, but this is not. Um, so now the Chinese gang's involved. The, I think the Yakuza hire him or something. Somebody hires them to kill. Yeah, because they our, have a hit, hit job out on the assassins now, yeah. too. When you need it done, as soon as possible. And in the, in the meantime, um, Mel Novak, Milan, tries to tell his girlfriend to leave. He's like, you got to get out of here. Oh, uh, yeah. We're in trouble. Yes, this seems amazing. I'm not lying to you. I've never lied to you. Please understand this is for your protection, not mine. Uh, but the Chinese gang <laughs> shows up in this moment. <laughs> but Brian, what happens? <laughs> but you got to trust me on this. You can't spend time with me now. You got to get a time out. Turns out they have terrible aim. Right as they, uh, I also love how like uh, Mel, uh, Mel Novak and his girlfriend like completely go deaf in this scene because this car, it's like a, it's like a souped up like street car, like drives up behind them in this like empty parking lot and they don't even once turn around to look at it. They're just like, okay. So they unload th through the window, and every single bullet hits his girlfriend. Not a single one hits Mel Novak. Yes. It's like great aim, guys. And in the greatest acting ever. Yes. He well, he, he, he fires a few rounds. Yeah. And, scares them and they run away. But then he sees her on the ground. Yeah. The love of his life. He's obviously distraught. I'll get them. <laughs> That's what happened. That's I'll get him. Uh, we go back to the police station for a thing. She explains how she was wiretapping people to the chief, and he's like, "You shouldn't have been doing that." And also, my favorite thing is she's like talking about the case, and they have like, like you know, like in a in a real crime movie, they would have like a big bulletin board or a yeah, whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> These are this is they look like project boards that like high school students or. or Elementary school students or whatever we yeah, have for yeah. a science project. Yeah, yeah. they printed out. They took some. Uh, they took like a, a little piece of like uh, uh, card stock and then printed out teeny tiny little names and and, and pictures. Then she, she like makes light of that. She's like, yeah. Vladimir Kadyuka. Looks like a freaking eye chart, doesn't it? Well, yeah, she makes a joke of it because I think the prop department fucked up and then she was like, well, this is stupid. So I got to say something about the fact that this is stupid. Um, but yeah, she's like pointing to it and I'm like, I, what is that? I can't see what you're pointing at. Okay. So she admits to her chief that she illegally wiretapped the mafia and he's like, hey, don't Oops. do that. Give me your badge and your gun. Uh, and then they, they throw in a nice little joke here uh, where she accidentally almost gives him her dart gun because she this is the thing they established earlier. She yeah. has a dart gun that she uses. That to, like, looks like an actual gun. Hey, Billy. 
What? Guess what I just did. Your badge and your gun just go. That's my dark gun. So she's suspended now and she goes out. Um, Russians meet up with our good guys. They killed their Russian mob boss. They kill him. Uh, and then they're like, hey, let's go talk at this meeting. Tomorrow night, the Polity is holding the meeting with Oscar Kwong and his men. The Japanese will be there too. Uh, I will say, Hedatoshi has dope tattoos, his Yakuza <laughs> tattoos, and I don't know, they looked pretty convincing. I don't know if that guy actually has those, but uh, they look pretty good. And I love, everybody leaves the scene, they, uh, it was a little moment, but in that, they're like, have the Yakuza have a meeting, and then they all get up to like go out on to this next place or whatever, and all of the henchmen walk past like the mob boss was sitting in his big chair at the end of the table and he gets up and leaves and then the rest of them have to file out of the room and they all have to like squeeze past the chair that he was sitting in and like the wall behind it they're like they're like and they're like all knocking into it's like a little stupid thing but it's just it, and it's that like why are it. you why did you cut it why didn't you we don't need to watch them all walk out of the room uh then the gang goes gun shopping welcome back what do you have in the back room So they're they're going gun shopping, and then they ask the stuff in the the special stuff in the back. Yeah. And as they're going back there, and like, I want the big one, Kenny. The one I want most of all is the big boy. Well, they they don't do the rev- they don't show us what the big one no. is because that, that's the reveal later. Yeah. But the big one is another mini truck, truck with a minigun. Truck with a minigun. You already Which, had. Yeah, you already that. had something like that. Yeah, I was like, "What it happened?" Sa- to- it wasn't exactly the same, but one, it was but it's pretty basically close. the same thing. It was a, it was a mounted machine gun in the back of a truck. It's like yeah, this one's a mini gun, so it's like cooler, I guess. But yeah, it's so stupid. And also, this is where I said this. I was he's like, I was like, why do you need what? Why do you need these guns? You already had all the guns in the beginning of the. What happened to yeah. the rest of your guns? We need more. Gu- okay. And also in that scene where he asks for the big one or the big boy, the gun dealer like looks back and forth for like ten seconds, including like you're directly. already in the back of the store. I, I know. And then and then my favorite thing. So he looks back and forth, and then the little dude goes, "I like it." And then the scene ends, and I'm like, "You like what?" The one I want most of all is the big boy. I like it. What's hap- what just ha- what? I don't understand what just happened. It's so weird. We find out that the chief is on the take. He's been taking money Ooh, from the big mob. shocker. When are you gonna get this Driscoll bitch off of my case? What the fuck do I pay you for? Oh, don't worry about it, Rusty. It's already taken care of. Uh, and there's a great moment where the chief is talking to DiPolito, the head gang boss guy, or a mob boss, and he goes, and it's just an editing thing, but I noticed it. Uh, the, the chief goes and he leans on the counter at this bar and then it cuts to a different angle and he leans on the counter again like it, he <laughs> leans he completes the lean and then it cuts and then he's mid lean again it's like come on guys cut on the action uh. uh and then uh so this is the big shootout at the end uh the guard outside who's guarding staring out at this parking lot at this mini mall does not see one of our heroes walk up and shoot him right in the chest I'm like, what were you looking at? <laughs> like, it shows him, like, standing guard looking out, and then it cuts to our person walk up and go, bang, and then it cuts back to him dying. And I'm like, what were you watching? What the fuck are you doing? He's somebody's, like, brother-in-law. Yeah. Like, like this guy's such a fuck up. Yeah. I guess we can make him the guard. I guess he can be the guard. Um, and then uh, I also love, uh, so the chief and the, the detective get into... 
a standoff at this point where she finds the chief uh, and she's like, hey, I know you're on the take. I found out you're, you're evil, blah, blah, blah. And he slaps the gun. <laughs> and tries to run. And at this point, you realize, oh, my God, these people are fucking They're old. They're so old. <laughs> She's like holding the gun and he's like. Like it would only make more sense if he had like a walker with tennis yeah, balls. Yeah. He those tennis balls. Yeah. Maybe that's what those are for. He needed to update the tennis balls on his walker. He needed fresh ones. Uh, but yeah, like literally it could have been like a walker chase away. It's hilarious. Run. Uh, and there's like a million edits in that moment too. For achievement in film editing, the Oscar goes to. And then everything goes down. Everybody starts shooting everybody. Uh, there's a baseball hat gang. I don't know who they are, but there's like a whole group of dudes wearing baseball hats that show up. Uh, and it's just shot after shot of gang members running with guns for like five minutes yes. before any of the shooting happens. And then the shooting happens and it's all terrible. Also, the dude who plays Jack uh, is a pretty good stunt performer. He yeah. has a pretty good fight scene here where he beats some dudes up and shoots them and stuff. That looks Kicks pretty. Nuts a lot. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I was like, all right, that's pretty pretty good. Uh, There's a really great little moment of somebody spraying bullets from like an Uzi and their CG shells ejecting, and they look so <laughs> terrible. It's like, oh my god. And in this moment, I don't even know who's shooting who, other than our good guys are shooting the bad guys, yes. but like the bad guys are also shooting each other and it's just like pure chaos. Um, and then there's like, oh, there's so many stupid things. There's a moment where our everybody's just shooting everybody, but we cut to our, our girl, the Russian girl mercenary, and she's walking through a room and a guy like sneaks up on no, her. No, like five guys sneak up on her. Yeah, with guns, but none of them shoot her. And then our uh, our Jack dude shows up and kills everybody. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, the the little dude comes in with the truck and the minigun. This 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 is his moment of shining because he is nothing yes. it, it, nothing if not a crack shot in this oh, entire yeah. scene. He murders everybody. And this is the moment where the truck drives up is uh, some of the other uh, drone shots in this movie. And it's so funny because I, I, I'm i a certified drone pilot. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, say that, say that again. I'm a certified drone pilot. <laughs> but my favorite moment. So I know, like, I know what they're like. I, I can, you know, like there's little things that I'm seeing them do that's just hilarious to me. But like the shot where the truck's driving down the aisle and the drone is flying sideways with it. They didn't cut it soon enough, so you can see the drone stop and go back because it was like about to hit a tree or yeah. something. And that's like, all you have to do is cut it a second what? earlier and then- I mean, you could go in right now and fix it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's like, why would you let it, because the drone stops and it's like, oh, okay, great, good job. But yeah, and then he goes in the warehouse and just rains a minigun into this building and kills everybody. I'm like, it's a good thing none of your partners were yes. in this area because you everybody's just, like doing nothing but like spray and pray the yeah, entire time. Literally just bullets everywhere. It, it's it, the, the way this movie should end is that the warehouse uh, we should just, like all everybody should just be shooting and then it uh, we should cut outside for a second and then the gunfire slowly fades away and stops and then we cut back inside and just literally everybody's dead because they all just shot each other and it was like ricocheted everywhere and everybody died. Um, Whereas they're leaving the the warehouse is so riddled with bullets it just kind of caves. Balls, in. yeah, <laughs> I mean even better, yeah. But she, so our detective lady confronts uh, Dipolito, the guy who killed her partner. Yes, and shoots him in the eye. Which is what happened earlier with the, the dart gun. She shoots him in the eye with the dart gun. Yeah, and says. Huh. 
an eye for an eye. Hey, hey, oh, hey, and then he falls over. Uh, dead? Question, Question mark? mark? <laughs> we got him, baby. We got him. And then, so after our uh, uh, detective kills Dippolito, the chief shows up with a gun. And he's like, hey, I'm going to take you out because you know my secret that I'm a dirty cop. And he's getting ready to shoot her and she's out of bullets or out of darts or whatever. And right as he's about this, to die. This is probably, of all the contrived stuff in this film, this is probably the most. It's pretty great. Milan just shows up. Hi, I'm here to arbitrarily save you. Bye. Yeah, and it's literally, he walks through the scene, smiles at her, and walks out. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Okay. Uh, so they killed everybody. Now everybody's dead, and our, our heroes are alive. They all survive, and they go outside, and they talk, and the detectives talk to him, and, and it's the classic action movie ending. <laughs> Ha 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 as we walk off. Well, no, no, it's ha ha ha, yeah, laughter, and I'm gonna give you five minutes, head oh, right. start. <laughs> because of that, I'm gonna give you a seven, no, I think I'm gonna give you a five minute head start before I shoot you in the back. And then I'm coming after you. <laughs> like that's the end. But then at the very end, the last shot is the little dude walking away from the camera, takes his jacket off. Yes, yes. And he has a shirt that says. I'm a survivor from the killing fields. The Cambodia genocide. <laughs> yes. And I was like. And so I quickly Googled, and that actor, in fact, did survive the Cambodian killing fields, which, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a horrifying thing from the 80s, I believe, uh, where they uh, killed a bunch of people in Cambodia. But uh, it, it's so out of yes. nowhere. It, 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 I hate to say it, as, as, as much as it sucks for that guy, it adds nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like, wait, what? And here's the thing. All they need to do is... Like, that could be a really interesting character background mm -hmm. for that character. Have him tell that story at some point. Like, about how he's, you know what I mean? In the, over the course of the movie, explain, like, why he's, uh, why he's over in America and, you know, how he escaped the killing fields yeah. and how you that could, you shaped even, him or you, something. You like, could even use that for, like, he has, like, if, for instance, if they have a target who's, has kids... He he won't he won't do it in front of them or something like that. Right, yeah. Some some it's like it's like it's like a really interesting and the fact that the actor survived it is like an interesting thing. Like you work it in your movie, like make it an interesting thing. But just to, at the end of the movie to be like, Google this as he walks <laughs> It's like the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest choice. I want to do that in short. I didn't want to do that in a movie where the, I just go, Hey, Google this. <laughs> Google this, and then you just got to. Uh, Lemon party spray painted on the back of your shirt. <laughs> Fades out, but then we fade back in. Turns out Dippolito was alive, the what? crime boss. But uh, his set number two shows up and kills yeah, he him. Gets, he gets killed by uh, not quite Christopher Lee. Yeah. You will taste man flesh. Uh, his number two shows up and kills him and calls somebody and says it's done. And then it's revealed that the guy he called was the Chicago mob boss from what? earlier, which isn't a surprise. No. The guy said he wanted to kill him earlier. He said, watch your back. So it's not like it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's and then that's the end of the movie. That's it. Kyle, what did you think of this one? It had the beginning is fantastic. Oh, the first five minutes or six minutes are just incredible. The end is fantastic, and yep. then there's little areas in between that have, that moments. have moments. Overall, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give it a, a good bad. I only, would too. Only because it follows my rule of storytelling, which is you have a beginning, 
and you have an in and then the stuff in the middle is the stuff in the middle. I agree. I would say good, bad as well. It's um, it, it is a little slow at times in the middle, but the opening six, seven minutes are incredible. The ending is incredible, like you said, uh, and there's enough throughout that keeps you going. There's it is not a complete slog through the middle. It's just not as action packed and hilarious as the first and, you know, first 10 minutes. Moments. Last it's like the hotel is a great moment. Yeah. Yeah. There's little moments. But uh, yeah, I, I think that that make it warrant good bad, um, and it's just yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it for this episode. As always, you can support us on Patreon, uh, Patreon.com/slash/gbrbb. You can also buy our merch at ptpublic.com, and then just search uh, "good bad" or "bad bad." Um, I have a podcast called This Film is Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, we will have just released the Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers episode, the second installment of our Lord of the Rings discussion. And I believe that is it. So until next time, keep watching movies. Especially Syndicate Smasher? Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, and Tubi. If you don't, T-U-B-I, that thing. There's a lot of really terrible movies on that. That that, that's, that sounds like a company that The last two movies we've them. done... Angry Kelly and Syndicate Smashers have both been on that. And there's a lot of... Oh, oh that's where uh, all of Alex Maisonette's films also are. Yes. So, yeah. Check out Tubi. It is a trash heap of terrible films. The end. <laughs>